I'm going to try this again. I tried to do it before, but somebody came out showing a property in Matterville, if you want to see here. So, um, the question today is, how do you cloud title using a list pendants when you flip or wholesale houses in New York? Now, so we're going to go through the things I said before. So it's important to understand why you might do this, how you do this, why it's different than other states. So first of all, you the reason you're going to do this is if you are in contract to buy a property and the seller decides not to sell it to you or not to sell it to you for the agreed upon terms. Sometimes sellers change their mind. I can get more money for this. You're trying to rip me off, that kind of thing. So um, in other states, it's very easy to get into to contract and it's very easy to get out of contract so you get into contract a buyer brings a seller a uh, contract they sign it you may not even need to give a deposit it's pretty simple um, but sellers walk away all the time they just call up and say sorry can't do it uh, I don't know am I still here uh, I'm in a bed is not a great sell area so again it's easy to get in and out of contract in other states so what people do in other states is they will file after a contract is signed a, they'll, they'll actually record the contract in some, in some counties. They will file an affidavit of contract in some counties. They will file a memorandum of contract in some counties. And what that does is cloud title. And what that means that is if, if the seller, if and when the seller decides to sell the property to somebody else, title is going to be run. And they're going to see this recorded and they're going to call you up and go, how do we release it? How much money do you want, basically? But if let's say the guy never sells it, right? Then you, that, that is irrelevant. It doesn't do anything. Now, in New York, it's a murder to get into contract, right? Contracts are not done between a buyer and a seller. They are done between a seller's attorney and a buyer's attorney. Seller's attorney prepares a contract, sends it to the buyer's attorney. They go back and forth with their bullshit, and then uh, contracts get signed. There's usually a, a very large earnest money deposit that gets deposited, and the contract's not valid until those funds clear. But one of the best things about New York, and maybe we'll talk about the challenges about New York later, is that the, one of the best things about New York is that if a seller decides to change his mind, you can do two things. First is file a list pendants on the property, and second is you can sue that seller for a specific performance, which is the entire purchase price. And you will probably win both times if you really have a valid contract, and if you go through a very, what's the word, technical legal procedure. You have to inform the buyer that you want to close, and you have you have to inform the seller you want to close. You have to schedule a closing, give them time of the essence, 30 days, a whole thing if you go through that and he doesn't close you then have the ability to do those two things so the first one's filing a list pendants and the second one is uh, suing him for specific performance now what some people ask me is well how does the seller know that he, there's all this liability and the answer is because they're represented by an attorney almost all the time so the seller is going to tell them so i've had probably i don't know three or four occasions where a seller called me and said i'm not selling or i'm not selling you for your price and i don't get upset i just say call your attorney call your attorney and next call that day or the next day is hey guys when are we scheduling the closing? Because they don't have any way out. You have no way out of a contract in New York. It's an amazing thing, right? In a lot of states, people have fall through, right? They go to contract, then it falls through. I had some deals in Florida. They fell through. Didn't happen. Seller said goodbye. I don't have any real recourse. So when you file a list pendants, it's a very, very serious legal matter, right? And it is exactly the same as if a lender is foreclosing on a property. List pendants doesn't cloud title. It obliterates title. It, it makes it impossible for them to sell it to anybody else. And it, it, it is as strong a legal tactic as you can possibly use. And again, if you file a false list pendants, right, the courts have not only removed the list pendants, but they've also sanctioned the attorney who did it and they've sanctioned the party who filed it. So you better make sure you have all your legal I's dotted and T's crossed because it can only be done with the proper notice and the proper way. Now, so again, if the guy never sells the property, it's not going to help you either. But the second thing you could do, which is sue the guy for specific performance, is will absolutely get him to sell you the property because he will not win in a court of law. He could say, I changed my mind. This guy ripped me, is ripping me off. It doesn't matter. If he signed a contract in New York which and represented by an attorney, even if, and if he's not represented by an attorney, you better get him to sign a very strongly worded affidavit that says he's not doesn't want to be represented by an attorney. Um, he really has no grounds to not sell you the property. None. So... You can sue him, take him to court. You're going to win, right? Chances are he's just going to sell you the property before he actually spends any money on legal uh, fees or actually ends up in court. So there is no place other than New York where you can do that. And it is an amazing thing. Now, theoretically, if you go in another state and you type up a contract that says you have these things, again, if something's not typical in a real estate transaction in a certain area, 
you writing it into your contract it does make it does still make it hard. A judge has to believe that the guy understood what he was getting into. But this is very typical in New York. Everything I'm talking about. So it's Liz Pendens. I don't know what it means. It means something in Latin. Um, it basically means hey, no one's buying this property unless Liz Pendens is uh, removed. So it's something uni- unique to York, New York, and it's something great. Now. We're going to talk, oh, so the basic challenges in New York. Like, this is one of the good things about New York. There are a lot of good things about New York. Um, you make a lot more money in New York than a lot of other places. You have very little competition in New York because it's so different in New York. Um, very hard for a seller to get out of contracts, we said. But there are challenges in New York. And those are usually the flip, the flip side of the things that we just said. So it's a pain in the ass to get into contract. I have a lot of deals where the buyer or the seller has agreed to me. And then he has to get an attorney. I can recommend an attorney, but he has to get an attorney to draw up a contract and send it to me. Now, I know what people say. Oh, no, avoid attorneys. It's not so simple. Um, it can be done. A lot of sellers have their own attorneys already, um, and that takes time. And then there's legal fees on my end also, and sometimes they fight over things. I have a situation right now where I'm trying to get into contract, and the attorney is really busting my balls about leaving money in escrow or something. It's a it's a multiple lots. I want to I want to see if I can build on the lot. And I want to pay them money, extra money, if I can build on the lot. And they're like, well, how do I protect my client? Let's let's leave money in escrow. I don't want to leave. It's a huge amount of money. And I don't want to leave it in escrow while I'm dealing with the uh, with building department. So that's an attorney thing. If they if they didn't have an attorney, I probably would be, <coughs> be in contract already. Sorry. Whoa. Whoa. Just need something. Let me get some water. So, um... That is a challenge in New York. There are other challenges in New York. Standard EMD, the standard earning money, earnest money deposit in New York is 10%. If you're buying something for $500,000, they're going to want you to put $50,000 down. You, have, you can negotiate it, but it's important to understand that is a challenge in New York. Um, also, standard contracts in New York say I have Clause 26, which says no assignability. Right, So you have to negotiate to get it, to get it assignable. And that is something that is only in New York to the best of my knowledge most contracts if they don't say they're not assignable um, they are assignable but in New York standard contract says it's not not assignable so it's important to understand the challenges of New York and the and the advantages of New York someone's going into my car now it's my son two, two minutes um, so if you have a situation where you're in contract to buy a property and seller decides to change your mind you need to make sure you have a good litigation attorney who's able to file a list pendants on the property because it has to it has to stand up to court challenge, right? It has to stand up to this guy saying, you know, you know, order to show cause or whatever the hell he's going to do to say what this list pendants was illegal and it better be legal. So you better go through the whole process, um, tell the guy you want to close, give him time of the essence, 30 days, show up at a closing, and then tell him, uh, I'm filing list pendants on the property, and I'm suing you for specific performance. Important to sue him, right? If not, guess what? He can just sit there with his list pendants until the day he dies. Guys can live over 100 years these days, so foolish to not do both. Do both. His attorney will almost... O- I've never had a situation where the seller's attorney did not tell them, hey, you have no way out of here. You have to close. So that's the basic gist of it. I hope this was helpful. If you're interested in all the ways I can help you, go to How to Flip. NewYork.com. If you're interested in finding out more about one-on-one coaching I offer, go to coaching.howtoflipnewyork.com. What else? If you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe. If you're watching on any media channel, please click the thumbs up. The likes really help my SEO, my search engine optimization. What I mean is that more people are seeing my videos now because they're getting a lot more likes, and that's really a good thing. Thank you, Alex or Lowell, for liking. Um, like them on YouTube, too. And... Um, Please keep the comments coming. I post five times a week. I don't always know what to talk about. And the comments really help me. They do not have to be about the video topic of the video you're watching at all. They can be about anything. Try to get back to comments within a day or two. And what else? What else? What else? What else? Um, oh, and it, if it's a simple, com- simple reply, I'll just reply with an answer. If it's something... Uh, that I've covered before in depth. I'll send you links to a videos on the video, a video or videos on it. And if it's something new, I will do a brand new video on it. So thank you very, very much for watching. I really appreciate it.